An amazing tool with Inksoft Core is Proposals. Proposals is an all-in-one sales tool to help you with invoicing, art approvals, reorders, and more. With Proposals, it lets you take advantage of all your sales opportunities and help you pitch, present, and win the job. Ideal for chatting with customers on the phone, communicating via email or in person, and needing to manually create an order, Proposals will be the way to go. In your Proposal Manager, you'll see stages to work in. The new stage? That's where a proposal will live until you send your proposal to your customer. Once the proposal has been sent, it will automatically move to the in-progress stage. Proposals are here waiting for the client approval and payment. If a client moves forward with the proposal and approves and pays, then it automatically will move over to done, and that's where it'll generate an order automatically as well. That order will then be in your order manager, and you can utilize purchasing and production tools to ensure that the order gets out the door and to your customer. You'll also see some options in the header of the page for open, archived, lost, and preferences. Open is where any active proposal is going to show. Archived is where a proposal will go as soon as it's completely finished and either moved to ready to pick up or ship inside your order manager. Lost is where a proposal can go if you mark it as lost and the customer, for whatever reason, doesn't go through with your proposal. Preferences is where you can set up some of the basics of your proposal, for example, taxation, reusable services, you can work on custom messaging for emails, so it's a good section to check out. Now we're actually going to create a proposal, and this can be done in the upper right-hand corner by clicking Create, and that'll bring us into where we can draft our proposal and build it out. So first thing I'm going to do is add a contact on the left-hand side. This is where you can create a new contact on the fly, or if you have a contact already added within the CRM system, I can easily look for that contact and add them to this proposal. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill out some information even further on the left here. First thing I'm going to do is add my proposal name. So this is where I'm going to go ahead and create one for CHS Gear. And then with proposals, you can choose who the assignee is, who is being, you know, really their contact, who's creating the proposal, who's generating it. You can choose that from the drop down menu. The PO number, expiration date, and in-hands date are all optional. If that's helpful for you, if that's going to be important with this proposal, absolutely add them in. Up next, we can choose our taxation options. You'll see I've got options within the drop-down menu here. I can continue rolling down and then go to payment details. And this is where I do have different payment terms I can work with. There's three options in the drop-down menu here that are really good for setting up how this proposal is going to function. Is it payment in full upon approval? Is there no deposit required? Is there a deposit required? And you'll see other options appearing below depending on what method you choose for payment terms. I also see information about shipping, which we're gonna add a little bit later on, and then our display settings, where we can choose to show a manufacturer and a SKU on the proposal if we want to. Now that we've got all that important information filled out on the left, we can actually start adding to our proposal, and this is done with these center icons. Starting right to left, we have Add Custom. Add Custom is where you can add a completely custom line item to your proposal. The most important thing to know is that if you choose to add a custom line item, whatever item you add in here, purchasing and production information will not be pulled over into the platform. So just note, if you add a product, you won't see that product showing up in purchasing and production if you go the custom line item route. Up next is add service. Add service is ideal for a bag and tag fee, for a vector fee, anything like that. You can create reusable services and charge per hour or per item. The next option is add art. Add art is perfect if you're working with a customer and it's more of an art approval than anything else. So if you want to send a file over, have a customer take a look at it closer, approve it and know you can go into production on it, generate maybe another proposal with product, you can absolutely do that with the add art option. The last option here, add product, is where we're going to be working with products. When I click this option, I am going to see a lot of different products populate. You'll notice there's a combination of blank items and I've decorated products as well. With this combination of blank and decorated goods, 
you can easily build a proposal and potentially add a combination of both. There's options to search, filter, sort by, look by categories here to find the product that you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and grab this t-shirt right here and we're going to decorate this product. You'll notice on the right here, I have all of my different color options that the shirt's available in. I'll go ahead and select the color I want or colors. I'll go ahead and click next. And this is where more options will populate for this item in this proposal. I can keep it blank where there's no decoration, pricing, no additional art. I can estimate the art price and that's where maybe I know it's gonna be a two color design, but I don't have the file quite yet and I'm gonna add it later. The last option is upload art. Upload art is probably what I see most frequently. This is where you can go ahead and upload the file that's going on this product to create a really professional looking mock-up. You'll see in this view, I have the option to work with a print file or an embroidery file. I'm gonna upload a print file from my computer and it gives you all of the recommend file types to work with. I'll go ahead, select a file and get that added. The file will take a second to upload, but once you have it, you can go ahead and click done. And then you'll see that design populating on the right hand side of the page. This is where I can go ahead, select that design and place it wherever I want on my product. I could make the design larger, smaller. I can roll on down and control, you know, the decoration area using that print region option as well. And really, you know, get the placement perfect. Once I'm happy with that placement, I can also go over on the left hand side and pick and choose how many colors of this item I'm wanting to offer to my customer. I'm going to keep this really simple and just go with ash gray. From here, if you're happy with everything, it's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and click create mockup in the upper right corner. And now I'm brought to the section of adding my quantities. So let's say for example, this organization wants 60 shirts total and they're looking for small, medium, and large. I can go ahead and add those size breakdowns. And then over on the right hand side, I would set up my decoration and estimate that art price. So I'm gonna go ahead and in the front option for the decoration method here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose this as a screen print job. And we're gonna say it's a three color design based on the design here and go add to proposal and let it load up with all my products, with my pricing and the breakdown right here. Now that we've got some products added to our proposal, we can customize this page a little bit further. So you'll see we do have the option of adding a section name. So this is where I could do CHS t-shirts, for example. And then in addition to having our t-shirt on the page for our proposal, you'll see below and above the proposal in this t-shirt section, I can go ahead and I do have the option of adding more products, adding art, adding that reusable service, custom minor items, or an entirely new section. So for example, I could go in here and maybe the customer's looking for hoodies as well. I could build the proposal out with a, a different variety of products, drag and drop and create the sections exactly how I want. Now, what I can go ahead and do, I'll delete this, and from here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save my proposal. Now that I've saved this proposal, you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, I have some additional options that I can work with. I've got the option to leave comments back and forth with my customer. If I click on this little paper airplane option, this brings us to the different scenarios and the different views that we can send this proposal in. You'll notice the first option on the left hand side is send as an approval. This allows your customer to view, comment, approve, and pay for that specific proposal. Send as quote, you'll get the approval on the product and pricing and collect deposits. And the last option, send as invoice. This is where you'll skip the approval and request payment right away. I'll click cancel in this view. And I do want to hover over the three small dots in the upper right hand corner for some additional options. This is where you can view the customer view of this proposal. You can send to the order manager, add payment, clone the proposal. You can print the quote out, print the invoice, mark as lost or delete. So lots of good options in those three small dots. What I want to check out next is customer view. This is a great way to preview the three different options that are available when you're sending out your proposal. So if I go to preview as approval, 
This will open up the approval view. Within this approval view, you'll notice right away it's a very professional presentation of the proposal. When I go ahead and from the end user's perspective, click view proposal, it's going to open up with a really nice breakdown of the products, the, the cost. I can see the option to leave comments, call the shop, email the shop with questions. There's also this view details button right here where from the end user's view, they can see a really nice visual presentation of what the product looks like decorated again with pricing, sizing, quantities, all of that's built into this proposal. When I go back to the main view, the big thing that your customer will be doing is clicking approve and pay. When they click approve and pay, this is going to open up and show the customer all of the details about this proposal. So the way this one is set up, I am requiring that total balance to be due just the way it was configured. I would go ahead and from the end user, click next, and they would enter in their credit card and really proceed with payment. But it's all about how the proposal is configured. But that approval view is a really nice presentation of what you're really creating for your customer. Going out of the approval view and back into our original proposal, we'll hop back in the proposal and go back to those three little dots, go to customer view, and the next option is preview as quote. You'll notice this view is very simple, very straightforward, has the product details, the sizing, the cost, um, but not, a, not as flashy or anything as that approval view we were just looking at. The big benefit of this quote view is having the word quote on the actual document here. It's common for organizations to require the term quote to be visible on documents they receive for approval or payment. So this is ideal for that situation where you're needing to send a quote out to a customer and it's got quote right there on the document itself. Your customer has the option to go in the upper right, download this quote as a PDF, print it out, also approve and pay. That's where they'll go ahead, click on that icon, and jump into the section where they can add their payment information, shipping, all of those details. The quote view is perfect for that actual quote presentation. The last option, and is very similar to the quote view, is going with the invoice option. So I'm going to hop in another tab here, and I have that pulled up. You'll notice really the only difference is that it states it's an invoice rather than a quote. The rest of the functionality is exactly the same, the look, the feel. The biggest difference is just that invoice right there on the document. Let's say the customer went ahead and they entered in their card info and really submitted this proposal. If we hop back into our proposal manager, you'll notice that in the done stage, I've got my CHS gear proposal listed right here. I've got the link to the proposal, but now you'll also see it's got an order ID as well. As soon as that's been approved, paid, moves into the done stage, any proposal will automatically generate an order. This is ideal for purchasing, production, and working with that proposal now as an order within your order manager. With proposals, you can create product mockups blazing fast. You can clone and present multiple options. You can use vector, raster, and embroidery files to create professional looking mockups. There's 100% mobile responsiveness when it comes to proposals. Customers can open a proposal on their phone, their tablet, easily pay and approve. You can also collect payment, streamline shipping and pickup, and use sales tax tools to make sure you're charging your customer correctly. Customers will be so impressed with a personalized sales experience, not to mention how easy it is to approve and pay. They'll keep coming back for more custom branded gear.